you see the leader, the Democratic leader here, and why don't I yield back my time and let the Democratic leader take time off the bill, take time. Democratic leader? I'll use leader time. Without objection. I place economy among the first and most important government virtues and public debt as the greatest of the dangers to be feared. President Thomas Jefferson. Mr. President, today the Senate's considering a bill to increase the nation's debt by $781 billion. If adopted, it would be the fourth such increase in five years this administration has been in office. I will be opposing this latest request, and I hope that people on both sides of the aisle will do the same. Any objective analysis of our country's fiscal history would have to conclude this administration and this rubber-stamping Republican Congress are the most fiscally irresponsible in the history of our country. In fact, no other president or Congress even comes close. When this administration came to office, the federal government was running large annual budget surpluses that were projected to continue as far as the eye could see. These projected surpluses were so large that the Congressional Budget Office estimated the federal government would pay off all its publicly held debt by the year 2009. In fact, Alan Greenspan, then the chairman of the Federal Reserve, and other economists expressed concern that these surpluses would be so huge they risk unsettling the financial markets. Madam President, because of the reckless fiscal policies of this president, and the Republican-controlled Congress. 2009 will be a year to recognize President Bush's multi-trillion dollar red ink special. Over the past five years, rather than running record surpluses and reducing record amounts of debt, our nation has suffered record deficits and debt increases. In fact, when it comes to deficits, this presence owns all the records. The three largest deficits in our nation's history have all occurred under this administration's watch. The deterioration of the federal government's finances is the direct result of the misguided priorities of this administration and this rubber-stamping Republican Congress. These deficits have resulted in an unprecedented and dangerous borrowing spree. Total debt during this spree has grown by trillions of dollars. President Abraham Lincoln said, as an individual who undertakes to live by borrowing, soon finds his original means devoured by interest, and next, no one left to borrow from, so must it be with government. Oh, if the Republican president and Republican-dominated Congress had followed the advice of Abraham Lincoln. The legislation on the floor today will push the nation's borrowing limit to nearly $9 trillion. Compounding matters, the President's most recent budget, much of which Senate Republicans have placed before the Senate this week, would make matters substantially worse, leading to $12 trillion debt by 2011 just as the first wave of baby boomers is beginning to retire. Not only is debt exploding at the worst possible time, increasingly we're borrowing from foreign lenders. Since this administration took office, United States debt financed by foreigners has more than doubled, increasing by well over a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars. That's more foreign held debt in five years than the nation accumulated in the first 224 years of this republic. By contrast, during the last three years of the Clinton administration, we paid off hundreds of billions of dollars of debt, including $200 billion in debt to foreign leaders, foreign lenders, I'm sorry. Given the explosion of debt in recent years, it's long past time for Washington to change the course and adopt a new fiscal policy. After all, the future of our economy and our nation is, is at stake. The Comptroller General of the United States, David Walker, told the Senate Budget Committee 
recently, and I quote, continuing on this unsustainable fiscal path will gradually erode, if not suddenly damage our economy, our standard of living, and ultimately our national security. If my Republican friends believe that increasing our debt by almost $800 billion today and more than $3 billion, $3 trillion over the last five years is the right thing to do, they should be upfront about it. They should explain why they think that more debt is good for our economy. How can the Republican majority in this Congress explain to their constituents that trillions of dollars of new debt is good for our economy? How can they explain that they think it's fair to force our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren to finance this debt through higher taxes? That's what it'll have to be. Why is it right to increase our nation's dependent on dependence on foreign creditors. They should explain this. Maybe they can convince the public they're right. I doubt it. Because most Americans know that increasing debt is the last thing we should be doing. After all, I repeat, the baby boomers are about to retire. Under the circumstances, any credible economist would tell you we should be reducing debt, not increasing it. Again, on debt, Thomas Jefferson. These are his words. And to preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. We must make our election between economy and liberty, or perfusion and servitude. President Thomas Jefferson. Democrats won't be making arguments to support this legislation, which will weaken our country, weaken our country. The president often speaks of personal responsibility. In a speech before African American leaders earlier in his administration, the president stated that a president is judged not by the words he speaks, but the, but the works he leaves behind. The works he leaves behind. By that benchmark, the President and this Republican-controlled Congress will not be judged kindly, not be judged kindly with respect to his stewardship of our nation's finances. Mr. President, we're being asked to do what shouldn't be asked of us, to increase the debt to almost $9 trillion. I hope everyone walking down to these desks today will understand what they're doing, what they're doing to our country. On this side of the aisle, we know. Thank you, Madam President.